welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohimi, King of the Universe, who chose us, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to grow ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Exodus 35 1 through 38 20. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that Yahweh has commanded you to do. Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of solemn rest. Holy to Yahweh. Whoever does any work on, us, on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is a thing that Yahweh has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to Yahweh. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring Yahweh's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and of fine twine linen, goat hair, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, and goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrance incense, and onyx stones, and stones for setting, for the ephod, and for the breast piece. Let every skillful craftsman among you come and make all that Yahweh has commanded, the tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its hook and its frames, its bars, its pillars and its bases, the ark with its poles, the mercy seat, and the veil of the screen, the table with its poles and all its utensils, and the bread and the presence, the lampstand for the light and its utensils and its lamps, and for the oil for the light. In the altar, in the incense with its poles, and the anointing oil and the fragrance, the fragrant incense, and the screen for the door poles, and all its utensils, the basin, oh sorry, at the door of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its grating of bronze, its poles, and its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hanging of the court, its pillars, and its bases, and the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle, and the pegs of the court in their cords, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons for their service as priests. Then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came, every one whose heart stirred him, and in any every one whose spirit moved him, and brought Yahweh's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting, and for all its service. And for the holy garments, so they came, both men and women. All who were of a willing heart brought brooches, and earrings, and signet rings, and armlets, all sorts of gold objects, every man dedicating an offering of gold to Yahweh, and every one who possessed blue or purple or scarlet yarns of fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ram skins or goat skins brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought it as Yahweh's contribution. And everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it. And every skillful, skillful woman spun with her hands. And they all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them to use their skills, spun the goat's hair, and the leaders brought onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastpiece, and the spices, and the oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, all the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that Yahuwah had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a freewill offering to Yahuwah. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, Yahweh is called by name 
Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of Elohim, with skill, and with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, for work in every skilled craft, and he has inspired him to teach both him and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, from the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work done by an engraver, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Bezalel in Aholiab, and every craftsman to whom Yahweh put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all that Yahweh has commanded. And Moses called Baziel and Aholiab, and every craftsman in whose mind Yahweh had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. Still, they still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning so that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task that he was doing, and said to Moses, The people bring much more than enough for doing the work that Yahweh has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and word was proclaimed throughout the camp, Let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for the material that they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. And all the craftsmen among the people, sorry, and all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with tin curtains. They were made of fine twine linen, blue and purple, and scarlet yarns with cherubim, skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made fifty loops on the one curtain, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite <coughs> one another. And he made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps, so that the tabernacle was a single hole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. And he made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops on the edge of the outermost curtain of the one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the, out of the other connecting curtain. And he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together that it might be a single hole, and he made for the tent a covering of ten ram skins and goat skins. Then he made the upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. Each frame had ten, t sorry, had two tenons. For fitting together, he did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames of the tabernacle he made thus. 20 frames for the south side, and he made 40 bases of silver under the 20 frames, 2 bases under one frame for its 2 tenons, and 2 bases under the next frame for its 2 tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, he made 20 frames, and there are 40 bases of silver, the 2 bases under one frame, and 2 bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle westward, he made 6 frames. He made two frames for the corners of the tabernacle in the rear, and they were separate beneath, but joined at the top. At the first string, he made two of them this way for the two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, sixteen bases under every frame. Two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle at the rear westward, and he made the middle bar to run from the end to end halfway up the frames, and he overlaid the frames with gold, and made their rings of gold for holders for the bar, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue 
and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. With cherubim skillfully worked into it, he made it. And for it he made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold. And he cast, cast for them four bases of silver. And he made a screen for the entrance of the tent. And of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen embroidered with needlework. And its five pillars with their hooks and overlaid their capitals. And their fillets were of gold. But their five bases were of bronze. Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half was its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And he overlaid it with pure gold, inside and outside, and made a molding of gold around it. And he cast for it four rings of gold in its, for its four feet, two rings on its one side and two rings on its other side. And he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. Put the poles into the rings on the sides, of the ark to carry the ark, and he made a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth. And he made two cherubim of gold, and he made them of hammered work on the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherubim on the one end, and one cherubim on the other end. In one piece with the mercy seat, he made the cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces one to another toward the mercy seats with their faces, or the faces of the cherubim. He also made the table of acacia wood. Two cubits was its length, and a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height, and he overlaid it with pure gold and made a molding of gold around it. He made a rim around it, a handbreadth wide, and made a molding of gold around the rim, and he cast its four rings of gold and fastened the rings to the four corners of its four legs, close to the frame were the rings. As holders for the poles to carry the table, he made the poles of acacia wood to carry the table, and overlaid them with gold, and he made the vessels of pure gold that were to be on the table, its plates and dishes for incense, and its bowls and flagons with which to pour drink offerings. He also made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of hammered work, its base, its stem, its cups, its calyxes, and its flowers were of one piece with it, and there were six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side of it. Three cups made the almond blossom, each with a calyx and a flower on one branch. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with a calyx and a flower on the other branch. So for the six branches coming out of the lampstand, and on the lampstand itself were four cups made like almond blossoms, with their calyxes and flowers, and the calyx of one piece with it under each pair of the six branches going out of it. Their calyxes and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole of it was a single piece of hammered work of pure gold, and he made it seven lamps and its tongs and its trays of pure gold, and he made it and all its utensils out of a talent of pure gold. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit, and its breadth was a cubit, and it, it was square, and two cubits was its height. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top and around its sides, and its horns, and he made a molding of gold around it. He made two rings of gold on it, under its moldings, on opposite sides of it, as holders for the poles to which to carry it, and he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil also, the pure fragrance incense, blended as by the perfumer. He made the altar of burnt offerings of acacia wood. Five cubits was its length, and five cubits its breadth. It was square, and three cubits was its height. He made horns for it on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all its utensils of bronze, and he made for an altar a grating, a network of bronze, under its ledge extending halfway down. He cast four rings on the four corners of the bronze grating as holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar to carry it with them. He made it hollow with boards. He made the basins of bronze and its stand of bronze. 
from the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered in the entrance of the tent of meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, stop it. And he made the court. For the south side, the hangings of the court were fine twine linen, a hundred cubits. There are twenty pillars, and their twenty bases were of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, there were hangings of a hundred cubits. There are twenty pillars, there are twenty bases of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the west side, there were hangings of fifty cubits. There are ten pillars, and there are ten bases. And the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the front, to the east, fifty cubits. The hangings for one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and three bases. And so for on the other side, on both sides of the gate of the court were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen, and the bases of the pillars were of bronze. But the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. The overlaying of their capitals was also of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver, and the screen for the gates and of the court was embroidered with needlework in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. It was twenty cubits long and five cubits high in its breadth, corresponding to the hangings of the court. Their pillars were of four in number. Their four bases were of bronze, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals and their fillets of silver, and all the pegs for the tabernacle and for the court, all around were of bronze. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, gave her the Torah, Bukata Adonai Elohim, Malach Halo, Mashanatel. Alom Nata Betakinu Brukata Donanitin Hatara.